Alzheimer's disease, the most common form of dementia, is changing the lives of ageing citizens across the world. Research conducted by Janssen is providing a bank of valuable data, bringing a greater understanding of the disease and promising new approaches to developing a disease-modifying treatment. We sent reporter Katie Haswell to find out more. Just imagine that you're on your way to work, you're walking a route that you've been doing, I don't know, for the last 20 years or so, and you get to a familiar street corner and you suddenly think, hang on a minute, is it left or right? And all of a sudden, you've come to a standstill. Every three seconds, someone in the world develops dementia, forgetting familiar tasks, difficulty planning, behaviour changes. The biggest cause is Alzheimer's disease. Close to 50 million people worldwide live with dementia. It's a number that will double every 20 years, reaching over 130 million in 2050 as the population continues to age. Research into dementia and Alzheimer's disease has certainly come on a long way in recent years, and that's in large part due to improved technology, but also a growing conversation between scientists and the wider community. Leading the field is Janssen Research and Development, one of the pharmaceutical companies of Johnson & Johnson, whose neuroscience teams are researching how to stop or slow the progression of dementia. Janssen's mission and how we develop new medicines is taking transformational ideas from science that have a high innovative content into areas of high unmet need. One of the lessons we've had, if you start treating too late in the course of disease, your ability to move the dial is significantly compromised or actually zero. Until recently, scientists could only diagnose Alzheimer's once memory loss had already started. Now, thanks to brain scans and spinal fluid analysis, they can test for biomarkers to detect changes in the brain 10 or 20 years before dementia sets in. They look for two proteins called amyloid and tau, which indicate the presence of Alzheimer's. We've known for many years that they're there based on autopsy results of brains, but we had to wait till patients died to look at their brain at autopsy. Now we can image those very same changes in the brain in living people. That's important because it provides a window of opportunity to intervene in that early stage before people are impaired, before they're having manifestations of the disease, and try to slow or stop the disease. In other words, approach it like we do other chronic diseases, such as heart disease or vascular disease. We don't wait until people have a heart attack to start trying to control their blood pressure and their cholesterol levels. If you do diagnose someone early, is there much you can do? One of my answers to that is potentially there are treatments. So some of those treatments that have been put into late stage clinical trials, so they've always already been evaluated in patients with late stage disease and show not to be effective. If we were able to give those treatments at a much earlier stage, when potentially rather than trying to reverse cell death you could prevent it or rather than trying to reverse beta amyloid deposition you could stop it being deposited in the first place those drugs that have failed in late stage clinical trials could potentially do something much earlier on. That's the plan but to make it happen experts the world over need to work together if they're to make genuine progress in developing treatments. The field of research is accelerating uh, spurred on of course by the huge unmet need we're all facing and what that has also uh, caused to emerge is the real high pressure to collaborate across multiple stakeholders. Working with people in other disease areas is also hugely important. They're looking at all different types of mechanisms and just potentially some of those mechanisms have relevance in this area too. So it's really important to collaborate. No one person and no one group can possibly know everything. So bringing in ideas and expertise from all different areas is really, really important. This is a time of, of increasing optimism for those of us who are trying to develop drugs to treat Alzheimer's disease. And that's because of some important discoveries in the last decade that are really, I think, going to make a difference um, in our success. Vital if we're to make genuine progress in giving people who might never again view the world quite as they did a chance of retaining the dignity of a life they once enjoyed.